Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Hey everybody, welcome to our podcast series, Data Movers. I'm your host, Jamie Scott Ukataya, CEO and founder of JSA, along with my fabulous co-host, top B2B social media influencer, Mr. Evan Christel. Hey, Evan. Hey, Jamie, and hi, everyone. Thanks for joining Data Movers, where we sit down with the most influential folks leading today's telco and data center world, supporting the network infrastructure requirements of our modern workplace. Uh, Jamie, I have a question for you. Do you still believe in email marketing? Is that is that something you still do at JSA? Sure, sure. It's actually pretty uh, uh, pretty big deal. It's, uh, it's a good way to get uh, folks that, you know, have bought into your email uh, permissions, right? They, they want to hear from you. Uh, it's a good way for them to, uh, to keep in touch, for sure. Yeah, why? Why you ask, Mr. Evan Christel? Well, I was just curious, because over the pandemic, I started my own newsletter yeah. uh, based on the Twitter uh, review platform, and I'm up to 70,000 subscribers. Is that, that's pretty cool, right? That's awesome. That is craziness. Se- craziness, 70,000. Well, think about it, too. Your reach on social, you have like, what, 250, 300,000 per social board, maybe more now? I don't even know. I haven't checked. It's bit. up there, yes. So if you think about a percentage of, of all those boards, 70,000, yeah. That, I, I mean, I could see you getting that that uh, that quality subscription list. Wow, that's amazing. Great. Yeah. Well, that's well, thanks, I want thanks. To it. I, want, I want to hear from you on a regular basis. I will, I'll subscribe, but but um, let, let's chat to our next guest who's also in this new world of digital. Well, talking about amazing resources for our industry besides Evan's uh, newsletter. Um, I really, I can't wait to introduce you guys. Um, if you don't know already, um, our fabulous guest, where we really, you know, love to hear from folks like this, people, uh, people who are moving and, and uh, shaking our industry with their insights, their perspectives on the future of our industry. Uh, for sure, our guest, Eric Bell today, founder of Baxtel.com fits that definition. Welcome, Eric. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, welcome, Eric, at Baxtel, B-A-X-T-E-L dot com. Looks like you're the Google of data centers. Is that <laughs> a way to describe you? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess you could say Google of data centers or perhaps the help of data centers. We want to help people find uh, the right data centers for their needs and provide information uh, for them to, to make that decision. Fantastic. Well, let's, let's start off walking us through your career and how you create came to create Baxtel.com looks like it started as a hobby. Is that is that right? That's correct. Um, yeah. So walking through my career, uh, and it did start as a hobby, a uh, hobby project, learning how to program. Uh, but looking at my career early on, uh, I you know late '90s, I was looking for a career change. I had a, a business degree, I had a few, few jobs, you know, out of college, but then um, took a few computer classes because the internet thing was 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 kind of hot back then um, in the late 90s. Took a few computer classes, got uh, started in a call center. Uh, within a few months, was plucked out by the chief network architect. Uh, and he wanted to train a few people up from scratch, or a couple of people up from scratch. And so really joined their IP engineering backbone team and learned everything on the fly. Uh, did a lot of reading and on the, on the job training. Um, and what that really taught me, it was the power of small teams, small teams being able to affect a lot of change. And if you have a lot of people pulling or a small number of people pulling in the same direction, you can really accomplish a lot. Um, over time, I transitioned um, in that role to um, peering interconnection, um, built out their, their peering uh, interconnection platform. Uh, the way interconnection is simply the way, you know, the internet's a collection of private networks and it's the way those private networks interconnect. Uh, and they interconnect in various billions uh, around the U.S. and around the world. Anyways, um, over time, I, I point my career towards the customer, you know, out of engineering and more towards the customer. So, you know, various roles as you know, sales engineering. Um, one of my favorite was a product manager uh, role. Uh, worked at Equinix as a product manager of interconnection, you know, in charge of peering and, and cross connects and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and then, you know, moved on to core site and sales and business development uh, roles there. 
Um, and so that kind of sums up uh, my career in a, in a nutshell, um, effectively starting out in engineering and, and pushing my way towards product and business development. And you certainly have worked at uh, the, the best of the best uh, in our industry, uh, Equinex, Course 18, Few. Um, how, have you, how has your previous expertise, your experience that you've gathered at these locations um, really shaped the way Backstyle serves the space today? Yeah. So even though I had the business degree, my origin in the industry is in engineering, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I appreciate and understand that engineering mindset. It's kind of the, the way I think. But I also, you know, through my last positions in the corporate world, were in sales and business development. So it provides a combination of a unique uh, mindset um, where I understand the, the sales process, but I also think like an engineer. Uh, and although I started uh, Backstell, you know, I, I think that that engineering mindset made me kind of yearn to get back there. So I was a little bit bored with my sales roles. And so, you know, doing Backstell, you know, created Backstell as a, as a way to learn programming uh, and, and, and yearning to, to kind of get back in my hands dirty in the technical space. Yeah. So the, the, the yeah, how, how to fuse the, the two, you know, I, I really want to uh, focus on accuracy within, within Backstell, transparency, all, almost all the information is available, at least right now, um, without a login. So it's just publicly available. And so it's, it's creating that transparency. And I wanted, I think back then there weren't many resources. There have been more resources now, uh, but at the time there was only a data center map, which um, a lot of folks use, but ironic, ironically, it didn't really have a mapping function. It just listed data centers in each Metro. Um, and so the, the information was a little bit stagnant and wanted to provide uh, more tools uh, for that, you know, data center buyer to, to you know, uh, find information because there was uh, information asymmetry. You know, all the information at the time was in the hands of the data center sales team. Uh, so I wanted to provide that, those tools and that information to the data center buyer. And over the years, I played around with different business models. So for, for example, last year or the previous years um, was focused on a, more of an agency model where we, we matched up buyers and sellers. And this year, um, we focus, we've been focusing on uh, developing our advertising uh, platform uh, and lead gen tools for, for data centers. Awesome. Something really cool about Backsell.com is it allows you to hone in on specific regions around the world versus limiting it to a city or a state. I'm just online here and I looked up, for example, my area, the Boston Metro, Greater Boston Data Center Market. And there were 47 data center sites. I had no idea there were this many around, around this area. That's intriguing. But can you comment on some of the regions where you've seen uh, the market really booming? Yeah, so um, good question. And we have, um, we have stacked things uh, to be regional specific. So for example, um, and I'll get to the booming part, but um, uh, for example, you know, if, if you're in Boston, you can also see if you go up a, a level, you can see your, all the data centers in Massachusetts, or you can see all the data centers in the United States. Uh, it's the same thing is true in the way we post uh, news or um, events. So if you're only interested in data center or, or events in Boston or events in Massachusetts, you can see those, right? Uh, and events are a little bit light now because there's not many in-person events. Um, but, you know, it, but from a news perspective, if you're looking for, for news only in France, you can, you can get that uh, in, in a way to tailor uh, the, the news uh, that, that you receive in the data center industry. Because I can tell you that there's a lot of um, news out there and being able to hold in, hone in and put some blinders on and just only see the news for what you're interested in. We do the same thing for companies. So if you're only in, interested in Equinix news or in Volta news, you can, you can see that as well. Uh, in terms of areas that are booming, um, I would say that, um, you know, the, of course, the, the, the trend in the last few years has been, you know, edgier metros, right? You know, that everyone's talked about the edge and some of, some of it has been promised and some of it has been in, in reality. Um, you know, so places like, you know, Ohio, or, you know, there's a, you know, Indonesia or India, you know, those places are, 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 are moving at a pretty good clip. You know, Connecticut has an interesting up and coming story, I think. Um, you know, I think there's some secondary markets in the U.S. Uh, that are moving into or growing into primary markets like Phoenix or Hillsborough. They've seen a lot of development uh, recently. Um, it's also they're curious about how Brexit um, will impact the U.K. 
in the data, data center industry, particularly recently through the pandemic, right, there's been so much growth. And so, you know, rising tide lifts all boats, but you kind of wonder how Brexit's going to impact uh, the UK data center industry going forward. I saw recently, I think back in June, Euronext announced that it was moving from London to Italy as their, where, where their data center will be located. Um, I could go on and on. Um, but I think you can't, you can't discount the, the main markets too. Um, I think when you look at satellite imagery over Northern Virginia, there's just tons of development, particularly in, in Northern Virginia and driven by Amazon and some others. Um, but yeah, there's just massive building even in primary markets. It really is. And so uh, with all that uh, information at your fingertips, are you noticing any uh, interesting uh, industry trends that we should be keeping our eye on? I know you talked a little bit about Edgira Metros and, uh, uh, you know, the, the Brexit movement uh, impact uh, and, of course, Northern Virginia, but anything, uh, not so regional focus, but overall industry trends? Yeah, so I think that, um, it, I mean, it's no secret that data centers use a lot of resources, a lot of energy and a lot of water. Uh, and I'm encouraged, uh, really encouraged recently that there are a lot of data center participants, particularly the hyper, you know, led probably by the hyperscale, but also by some co-location companies announcing green projects. So for example, you know, not only green projects to fund or to, to energize certain data centers, you know, building a solar farm or wind farm nearby a data center to support it. Um, and that's been mostly hyperscalers, but also companies making commitments to become carbon neutral by a certain date. Uh, and I think that it, it's something I have a big interest in. And um, I think something you'll see Baxdell start to track uh, more in depth, uh, you know, to help track and support these endeavors. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. So, so, Eric, you're based out of Colorado. Uh, I love that lamp, by the way, in your background. Is, is, um, do you live in a saloon in the Old West? Is, <laughs> is that, because I want that lamp. I, I, I will pay any amount for that. Ooh, okay, it's, let's it's, talk afterwards. It's, it's uh, very low. It's very low tech for folks who are uh, uh, watching the video. But uh, in all seriousness, so what? What do you do around Colorado when you're not gunslinging? When, when you're uh, what do you what do you do in your your spare time? Ah, uh, yeah. So we moved out to Colorado in 2007. We moved here because it was warmer. Uh, you know, it's surprising. Colorado is a little bit of a. Uh, a there's a bunch of people from all over, a lot of people from the South as well. And they, they kind of look at me funny when I say I moved here when it was warm because it was warmer, but it is right. Moved here from the Wisconsin area. Um, but I, you know, and I think we made a list of places where we wanted to move. Uh, and, you know, of course, up and down the East Coast and a little bit in the West Coast and visit some of those places. But Colorado to me was the best combination of weather. Uh, you know, it had, still had tech industry and you know, medium cost of living, but access to fun things to do. So yeah, it's just still quite a data center and telecom hub. So you're in the right place. Oh yeah, for sure. There's a you know a lot of headquarter companies that are headquartered. You know, the two some of the largest um, network companies in the world are, are headquartered here. You know, like Level Three or Zeo um, or, or Lumen, uh, or uh, that is Level Three. But uh, yeah, so and, and a bunch of medium size or small size companies uh, in the industry are also headquartered here. But you know, in terms of things to do, you love to to you know ski, which is classically Colorado. Um, and next week, my family is getting together. Uh, extended family, we're, we're coming in to Winter Park. You know, rented a, a large house, and we'll, we're all going to enjoy some of the activities up there. So, what are some hobbies that we might not expect when you start failed participating in that you uh, that you love to do? Yeah. So I have three uh, kids that are that are you know most important to me, and so I have my kids only half the time. You know, was divorced. Uh, you know, uh, about five six years ago, uh, and so you don't often see me sitting down. Um, I, I like to keep moving, and I'm often out doing things. And so I must think of myself as is being in three different worlds. One is the tech and data center space. So you know, going out to conferences when when you know as they get rolling again or previously before that pandemic. Second, probably that that no one would ever, you know, that the worlds don't overlap is I uh, love to dance. Um, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I'll, yeah. Different types of dance and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. Start out Lindy Hopping back in the day. Lindy Hopping is a, is a jazz, you know, original jazz dance. 
uh, and love doing that. But, uh, you know, blues dance, um, just dancing to live music uh, in a thing called a stag dance. It's a little more bouldery uh, dance, but this is kind of a solo dance. But yeah, all that stuff. We'll put some videos in the show notes. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Right, we can maybe do that. I love it. I love it. You know, my, uh, my sister uh, teaches ballroom. And so okay. I grew up like going uh, Friday nights to, to her studio and, and taking a ballroom class uh, here and there. And it was, it was awesome. I just love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I love it too. It's, it's like I said, it's, you know, I like to push myself outside my comfort zone and some, you know, dance originally was that I was definitely not comfortable. I remember, you know, when I was first learning Lindy hop a long time ago, I don't know anything about music. You know, people ask me, you, do you play an instrument? I'm like, yeah, my, my iPhone, you know, plays music or Spotify plays <laughs> okay. Spotify. That's my instrument. But um, really it's, it might be myself, right? You know, I, 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 I moved to music now and I remember being in the car t- teach myself about time, you know, eight counts or, or whatnot, you know, just trying to find the beat in the music. And now I don't have a problem, but I just had to practice that over and over again. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it didn't come naturally, but, you know, love it now. Um, and then a third, a third area is, is probably adrenaline sports, right? And this is where it doesn't overlap with the tech or the dance, right? And so um, I'm in a few ice hockey leagues. I love ice hockey. That one I knew. For some that reason, one you knew. We talked about this before. Yeah, but yeah, it's ice. funny though because I was expecting ice hockey from then you came out with dance, so now I'm like, <laughs> there's no predicting what you're gonna say. I love, I love that. <laughs> um, and another thing, is one wheel. I, I have a. I don't know if you guys have heard of one wheel. It's probably popular out in LA. Um, it's it's a self balancing skateboard. It's one large wheel, and you're platformed on, on both sides. And I love it because it feels a lot like wakeboarding or surfing. Um, and, uh, it, but the, the Facebook forums are all filled with like broken collarbones and wrist bones and, and all sorts of things. Luckily I haven't broken anything yet on the one wheel. Yeah. They speed down here in SoCal, uh, by, and my dog flips out. So I think my dog's responsible for at least half of those broken collarbones. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It is a little scary when you're being chased by a dog on, on those things. Cause you yeah. can't push it too far. Cause that's where you, you do. Right. You know, just stuff. hop off, hop off. I always like, <laughs> please just hop off. I'm so sorry. That's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Um, I'm, I, I actually my I have a dog, a new dog, right. Um, and uh, he's very energetic. And so I, I do run him on the one wheel. So I, I take it to the next level and, and, and run my dog on the one wheel. Um, I need to, I need to get my dog more socialized about that. And I, I think I'm going to have to like, at least buy a skateboard or something and, and start out with maybe four wheels and <laughs> work my way down. <laughs> when do you people work? All you, all you people are doing is having fun and games here. This is uh, serious business. We need to, go to the data center be world. much more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, that brings us to the fun, fast, uh, exciting part of our show where we throw a bunch of rapid fire questions at you and you tell us a little bit of something that might surprise us an interesting answer that pops into your head um evan you want to kick it up uh sure you 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 mentioned your developer so i'm curious uh what's your favorite uh platform on mobile apple android or blackberry uh, well, I, I, Apple, um, a few years ago transitioned to the Apple ecosystem and you just kind of get sucked in and, um, I don't mind, uh, because it, it everything just works together. It's seamless. You know, my phone integrates with my, uh, my, uh, computer, which integrates with my iPad, which integrates with, you know, I can show, you know, screencast up to my Apple TV. So I don't mind being sucked into the, the Apple ecosystem. And so I'm assuming on your Apple phone, uh, what's the app that you use the most? Um, I would say, I mean, outside of the the, the email and, and calendaring, whatever um, type stuff, uh, it's, it's Google Analytics, um, mm. where I, I actively track uh, the site's um, performance all the time. And there's been some times where I've caught there's been a few, few things, you know, caught in performance problems, you know, say, for example, when we need to upgrade our database server, like things started to crash a little bit, uh, you know, you can, you can see that early on when traffic kind of tails off or there's a spike, you know, a few years ago, actually a few months ago, sorry, we had a, a spike, o- OVH had a fire that over in France, a data center, a whole data center burned down, uh, you know, earlier this year. And um, we had a spike on Backstaw. I was like, what is going on? What's, you know, so it was a way for us to almost see the news as it was coming in. So yeah, um, I would say Google Analytics and then 
there's an app that I use to read Hacker News, uh, which is a kind of a, a forum with, you know, yeah, from, from the Y Combinator uh, community. So that, that's something I enjoy as well. Nice. Okay. And uh, you're out in Colorado. What, what holiday does Colorado do best? Like, what's your favorite holiday out there? Uh, what, what do we do best? Um, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, it's hard to find a, a Colorado, uh, type holiday, but I would say people in, and I, w- I would say this as a advice. If you're going to come out here to ski, right. A lot of people want to come out here to ski and a lot of people come out for Thanksgiving or Christmas to ski for, in my opinion, that's way too early. The best known Colorado is later in the year, March and April often. Oh, nice. The ski hills close down often in mid-April, um, and 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 sometimes you get the best snow afterward. And I'm like, no, there's great snow up there, right? Why are they closing down? Of course, it's you know various reasons, but um, I would say that you know spring break then uh, in Colorado because it's the best snow on the hills. Awesome, awesome. And what's your favorite food? Favorite, oh, favorite food, uh, ice cream. Yeah, yeah. me too. <laughs> <laughs> ice cream every every night. Uh, for sure. Oh, nice. Yeah. Jamie might know this, but New England has the highest per capita consumption of ice cream in the world. So, Do they know that I moved though out of New England. Pro- <laughs> Pro- <laughs> Providence, Boston. We love our ice cream. That's, that's wasn't beautiful. Ben and Jerry's started up in the Northwest. Vermont. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was. Uh, it's all about our ice cream. Yeah. So wonderful. Well, thanks for joining us. Really fun learning about you, your amazing array of hobbies, but more importantly, your you know incredible mission in opening up the information space in the data center world. Very important uh, mission. So thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And go ahead and tell our, our viewers, if they don't know already, where can, uh, where can folks go to learn more about Baxtel? I would say just uh, go to Baxtel itself, B-A-X-T-E-L.com. Uh, or Google it, you'll, you'll find it, or search for any data center, uh, and, and hopefully we'll be in the top 10 of the results. But yeah, back to Nice, time. nice. Eric, thank you so much. And of course, Evan, as always. And folks listening, if you enjoyed today's Data Movers podcast, go ahead and check out more at jsa.net slash podcast. We release Data Movers episodes every other week on Wednesday morning. So go ahead and check us out there. And follow us on Twitter at Jay Scotto and Evan Kerstell, where we live and breathe as well. For sure. And as always, everybody, happy networking.